The last number we need is one that should be familiar to you. It's the TPC, or tons per centimeter immersion. The TPC is the number we're going to use to calculate how a ship sinks down into the water as we add and remove weights. If we add a 500 ton weight to the ship, but it's directly over top of the center of flotation, it shouldn't cause any change to the ship's trim because there's no turning moment created. But that doesn't mean that the weight is not having an effect on the ship's drafts. The ship will still sink bodily into the water, meaning the drafts change without any change of trim. To calculate the bodily sinkage, it's the amount of weight that was added to the ship divided by the tons per centimeter immersion. But even if we add weight that's not over the center of flotation, the ship is still going to sink down into the water. Whenever any weight is added or removed from the ship, we need to consider both the bodily sinkage and the change to the vessel's trim when we're calculating our new drafts. Let's say that our ship is sitting at even keel drafts of 4 meters. At that draft, we'll say our tons per centimeter immersion is 50 tons, the moment to change trim 1 centimeter is 550 ton meters, and the center of flotation is at midships. We want to add 1,000 tons of cargo into the number 1 cargo hold and determine how it's going to change our draft and trim. If you remember, the center of our cargo hold is 60 meters forward of midships, which means that the length of our lever is negative 60 meters. So if we take our cargo of 1,000 tons and multiply it by negative 60 meters, we end up with a turning moment of negative 60,000 ton meters. With this information, the first step to determining our drafts is to calculate the amount of bodily sinkage that's caused when we add the weight. The amount of weight that was added is 1,000 tons. The tons per centimeter immersion is 50 tons so the bodily sinkage will be 20 centimeters. Adding the bodily sinkage to our initial drafts of 4 meters brings our drafts down to 4.20 meters. Bodily sinkage gets added equally to both drafts. The next step is to calculate the change of trim. The sum of our turning moments is negative 60,000 ton meters, and the moment to change trim was 550 ton meters. So our change of trim is going to be 109 centimeters. Remember that the change of trim needs to be split between the two drafts. So 109 centimeters divided evenly is 54.5 centimeters. If we apply our trim, we get the final drafts that result after loading our 1,000 tons of cargo. If you need to load or unload multiple pieces of cargo and ballast, the calculation is done in pretty much the same order, only this time you need to add up the weights to determine the net weight that was added or removed. Use that to calculate the bodily sinkage. Then you calculate each of the turning moments and find the sum of the turning moments. Use that to determine the change of trim. In this way, you can make as many changes to the ballast and cargo as you want and still be able to calculate the final result. But using the tons per centimeter immersion to calculate the bodily sinkage only works when moderate amounts of weight are added to the ship. When we need to add larger amounts of weight, say more than 10% of the ship's dead weight, we can't use this exact method any longer. This is because as the ship sinks deeper, the area and shape of the vessel's water plane is going to be changing, and so will the tons per centimeter immersion, the moment to change trim one centimeter, and the position of the center of flotation. These values were based on the drafts we started with, and are no longer valid once you load this much cargo. The basic method to calculate this is pretty much the same, with a few added steps in between. Don't worry, we've already learned all the skills necessary to do this. To demonstrate it, let's use the gypsum centennial. If the ship is floating in fresh water with drafts 4 meters forward and 6 meters aft, 
the initial trim would be 2 meters by the stern. Now let's say we want to load the following cargo amounts. This is too much cargo to calculate our bodily sinkage using the tons per centimeter immersion, so instead we're going to use the stability books. The first thing we need to do is a rough calculation of our ship's mean draft. Assuming the center of flotation is at midships, the average of the two drafts is 5 meters. Now we can go into the stability book. We use hydrostatic tables to get important values for our calculations, including the tons per centimeter, moment to change trim, and the position of the LCF. We can extract these values based on our ship's mean draft, which for us is currently 5 meters. But remember the ship's true mean draft will change depending on the position of the center of flotation. We need to perform a correction to our mean draft to get the true mean draft in order to start the calculation off right. From the tables we see that the LCF is 7.068 meters forward of midships. Remember the gypsum centennial uses positive numbers forward of midships and negative numbers for aft so we'll just have to reverse that and say that our LCF is negative 7.068 meters. The formula for calculating true mean draft is the distance of the LCF from midships divided by the length between perpendiculars times the trim. LCF is negative 7.068 meters. The ship's length between perpendiculars is 188.4 meters and the vessel's trim is 2 meters by the stern. The correction works out to be negative 0.075 meters. When we take our mean draft and apply the correction, we get a true mean draft of 4.925 meters. Now we can go back into the tables using our true mean draft of 4.925 meters. You could interpolate between the table values to be more accurate, but for these calculations it's appropriate to just use the row that's closest to your mean draft. We don't need to find the TPC, MTC, or LCF yet, because remember they won't be valid anymore as we load our cargo. Instead, what we're interested in is the ship's freshwater displacement, based on our initial drafts. The displacement for our true mean draft is 23,210 tons. If we take our initial 23,000 ton displacement and add to it all of our cargo amounts, we arrive at a final displacement of 58,810 tons. Now we can go back into our hydrostatic tables using our displacement after loading in order to get the values we need. We can see that after loading our new mean draft is 11.44 meters. What this means is that if we started off at a true mean draft of 4.93 meters and we ended up at a mean draft of 11.78 meters after loading our cargo, then our ship sank bodily by 6.85 meters. This bodily sinkage gets added to our forward and aft drafts equally. Now we have our drafts after bodily sinkage and we're ready to move on to calculating the change of trim. We can think of the two effects, bodily sinkage and change of trim, as being separate events, even though in reality they're both affecting the ship at the same time. To calculate our change of trim, we need the moment to change trim one centimeter and the position of our center of flotation. We get these numbers using our final displacement after bodily sinkage. We can see from the book that our moment to change trim is 836.2 ton meters and our center of flotation is 3.861 meters aft of midships. From another section of the stability book, we can get the ship's capacity table. This table shows us information about the volumes and locations of each cargo tank, ballast tank, fuel tank, and water tank. We use this table to determine the longitudinal centers of gravity of each hold, which as we already know are measured from midships. Remember, though, that our LCF at this displacement is not at midships, it's further aft. 
we have to add or subtract the distance of the LCF from midships when we're calculating our levers. Now that we have both our cargo amounts and the levers for each hold, we can calculate the turning moments for each hold, add them all up to get a net trimming moment of negative 332,724 ton meters. If we divide our net turning moment by the moment to change trim, we get a change of trim of negative 397.9 centimeters. The next thing to do is to figure out how much of that change of trim is going to be applied to each draft. To calculate the aft draft, it's the distance of the LCF from the aft perpendicular divided by the length between perpendiculars times our change of trim. The distance of the LCF from the aft perpendicular is easily found by taking one half of the length between perpendiculars and adding or subtracting the distance of the LCF from midships. In our case, the LCF is 90.34 meters from the aft perpendicular. After completing the formula, the change of draft aft works out to be negative 190.8 centimeters. To figure out the change to the forward draft, it's the total change of trim minus the portion that we applied to the aft draft. Our change to the forward draft is 207.1 centimeters. Finally, it's time to calculate our drafts. If we take our initial drafts of 4 meters forward and 6 meters aft, add in 6.85 meters of bodily sinkage, apply the trim forward and aft, we get our final drafts after loading. To summarize what we've done, we started by calculating the bodily sinkage. In order to do that, we had to determine the true mean draft using the mean draft and the LCF from the tables. Then we used the true mean draft to find the initial displacement before loading. We added in the cargo amounts to the initial displacement to get the final displacement after loading. Then we used the difference between the drafts before and after loading to find the bodily sinkage. The next step was to calculate the change of trim. We used the final displacement to extract the MTC and the LCF from the tables. Then we found the longitudinal centers of gravity for each cargo hold from the capacity tables. We applied the LCF to the centers of gravity to find the length of the levers. Then we used the weights and the levers to calculate moments for each cargo hold and to determine a net turning moment. We use the net turning moment and the moment to change trim one centimeter to find the change of trim. Then we divided the change of trim between the forward and aft draft. The final step was to apply the bodily sinkage and the change of drafts due to trim to our initial drafts in order to get our final drafts. Most calculations of draft and trim follow this basic structure. Without too much trouble, this process can be rearranged mathematically to do all kinds of things, such as loading weights to achieve a certain draft, loading to keep the aft draft constant, and finding amounts to load to achieve a desired change of trim.